Tammy Rivero carries around the oxygen tank, keeping her alive. I can't breathe. Along with the memory of what oh, was supposed freezing. to be a medical miracle. I'm passing away, and I didn't want to die. <laughs> They put me through hell. We met Rivero at her rural Burke County home. I just hate people lying to me like that. Where the 62-year-old tells us her time is running out. I feel like I got a few months. Rivero suffers from COPD and emphysema, lung diseases with no cures. So she was excited when she saw an ad in 2015 offering stem cell treatment at the Lung Institute in Tampa, Florida. They told me it would completely repair my lungs. It seemed like a literal lifesaver. Three months to six months is when they guarantee I was going to be off oxygen. But the promise of a cure wasn't off. cheap. I had to give them the $7,000 before I could come in to the office. How did you afford that $7,000? I took a loan on my home. Rivero lives on 800 bucks a month in disability. According to court records, the Lung Institute encouraged her to take out a home equity loan to pay for treatment, which involved taking Rivero's blood, running it through a centrifuge, and re-injecting it back into her body. After it was over, her medical records show Rivero was told, now that you have received your stem cell therapy, your body will begin an accelerated healing process. Her written notes show she was told she'd be weaned off oxygen, her lungs restored by as much as 94%. Did it work? No. Did it improve your life at all? Did it help your lungs? No, nope. it's a snake oil. In the United States, the Food and Drug Administration regulates stem cells. Currently, the FDA has only approved the use of umbilical cord blood to treat certain blood disorders. Have you seen ads or attended a seminar for stem cell therapies that claim to be able to treat diseases like chronic joint pain, Alzheimer's, cancer, and more? Don't believe it. The FDA is now warning against unauthorized stem cell treatments, which it calls illegal, potentially harmful, and unproven to work. <coughs> I'm getting out of breath. I got plenty of air. Rivero <coughs> and another patient are now part of a proposed class action lawsuit against the Lung Institute. The attorney handling the suit represents more than 40 former patients or their representatives who allege they too were duped by misleading medical the claims. The Lung right. Institute denies the allegations, funny. writing in court records that patients consent to treatment and telling Fox 46 the lawsuit is meritless, saying, quote, the Lung Health Institute has treated many thousands of patients for chronic lung disease. The vast majority of those patients reported positive outcomes after treatment as supported by established and accepted quality of life measures. A judge is expected to rule on the class action status next year. You thought that this place was going to heal me completely. Four years after Rivero's stem cell treatment, her lungs are worse than ever. <coughs> Sorry. She now needs a double lung transplant to survive. The price tag, $7,000, an amount she money. can't afford to pay again. It's just a scam. They're ripping people off. They're lying to the patients that are desperate like me. If you're looking at stem cell therapy, FDA officials say ask if the FDA has reviewed the treatment and request the Investigational New Drug Application, or IND number, which is required for clinical trials, even if the stem cells are your own. Now, call me. Come get me up there. Please come and get me. Confusion and panic. I'm at the airport. I mean, I'm at the doctor. A series of voicemails. I'm at the bus station waiting on you. I'm in the courtroom. I'm in the courtroom. I'm outside the courtroom. From a man who's disoriented and desperate. I'm over, I'm over here in Brooklyn. 71 year old Alexander Rose was diagnosed with dementia. His frantic phone calls all made here at the Mecklenburg Health and Rehabilitation Center in Charlotte. After Alexander suffered a stroke, his son Terrence says he was not able to provide the round-the-clock care his father needed. Alexander was admitted to Atrium Health in July and transferred to this private facility for long-term treatment. But less than a month into his stay, Terrence says he was told his father's Medicare was not enough. He needed Medicaid as well, a process that would take 45 days to complete. He says the facility would not wait for the paperwork to process. Whatever I got to do, I'll do it. Not no, no, we just don't have time. We're going to have to send your dad home. You got to come get him. If you don't come get your dad, we'll put him in the cab and, put him, and send him to a shelter. But Alexander wasn't sent to a shelter. And I'm like, what? I'm not even around. Alexander signed his own discharge papers, was put in a taxi, and sent to his son's home, which was locked and empty. Terrence was out of town, more than two hours away. They put him in a cab 10 in the morning. I found him around about 2, wandering. 
lost. He was out of breath. He couldn't even breathe. Yeah, I got lost. Alexander says he didn't know what he was signing or where he was going. They shouldn't have did me like that. I didn't know where I was at. I was frightened. Facilities that accept Medicare and Medicaid have to follow certain state and federal rules. Rules our investigation found may have been violated. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, a 30-day notice must be given when discharging a patient, and a transfer needs to be arranged in consultation with the patient or guardian to, quote, a location capable of meeting the resident's individual needs. Off camera, the administrator of the facility, Cassandra Doherty, laughed when I told her about the Rose family's complaint. She accused Terrence of being inaccurate, but would not elaborate. I'm over, I'm over here in Brooklyn. Fox 46 asked if Alexander was in the right frame of mind to sign his own discharge papers, especially since Terrence is his guardian and has power of attorney to make medical decisions. In a statement, Doherty says she can't comment on specifics due to patient privacy laws, but tells us when a patient is competent and capable of returning to his or her prior setting, we have a responsibility to honor his or her wishes. To accommodate the patient's wishes, we help arrange appropriate transport and provide the family with ample notice to plan accordingly. This is all his supplies. Terrence says his father, who's also diabetic, was sent home with this plastic bag. That's sour. Smell like urine. Without any of the medicine he needed. He have this much medication already at home, and you don't send home a pill? What he was sent was a bill for more than $1,700. I'm doing everything the system say do. Now we get him in this system, and now this system say we don't want him. Kick him out. And if you don't come get him, we shipping him anyway. Sergeant First Class Richard Stasekull is fighting for his life. I'm slowly taking a turn for the worse. We know the drill about 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And a new law. Between going through treatments, got a family, wife and kids, work, going to D.C. So it's, uh, sorry, it's challenging. Stasekel, a Green Beret awarded a Purple Heart after being shot in Iraq, is one of hundreds of service members who are victims of military medical malpractice. ISIS couldn't kill him, but our own health care system is. In 2017, doctors at Womack Army Medical Center misdiagnosed his lung cancer twice, telling him he had pneumonia, despite internal concerns about, quote, a possible mass that needed attention. The lack of treatment early on gave his tumor time to spread. He's now stage four terminal. There's days I, I just really try not to believe that I have it. It's been one year since we first met the former sniper and his attorney, Natalie Kawam. A little different than you talk. It's you. Since our Fox 46 investigation, his story is getting results. He's met with President Trump, Vice President Pence, and dozens of lawmakers in an effort to overturn a nearly 70-year-old Supreme Court ruling known as the Ferris Doctrine. That ruling prevents active duty soldiers from suing the government, in Stasekel's case, for medical malpractice. <laughs> if Stasekel had been a civilian, a veteran, or even a prisoner, he could sue. But because he's active duty, he can't. Love you guys. He says the Ferris Doctrine shields bad doctors from accountability. It's taken a toll on people's lives. At a time when Rich should be able to spend his remaining days with those he loves, he has answered the call to fight. On Capitol Hill, there's bipartisan support for a bill in his honor that would give soldiers the right to sue for malpractice not related to combat. Fighting for this is, originally it was kind of like it was maybe ju it was just for myself. You know, I wanted to make sure that that, that doctor is being held accountable for his actions, for lack of actions. Um, and then as time went on, when I met more and more people and heard how many people were affected by this, by the Ferris Doctrine, um, it just became more apparent that it was something I had to do. In between cancer treatments, Sergeant First Class Richard Stasekel is fighting to give troops the ability to sue the government when medical care goes wrong. A bill named after the dying Purple Heart Green Beret has bipartisan support in Congress. This is the kind of injustice that had to be fixed. Well, there are a lot of issues that do transcend partisan politics, and supporting our troops is one of them. But the bill is stalled in the Senate due to opposition from South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham, who chairs the Judiciary Committee and has refused to take up the bill or even meet with Stasekel. Senator, can you talk about your opposition to the Ferris Doctrine bill, and why do you think soldiers like Richard Stasekel, who have been the victim victim of extreme medical malpractice should not be allowed to sue. Yeah, I've been a military lawyer for 33 years. The deal is you sign up for the military, 
you get disability, you get benefits, your family gets well taken care of, and uh, you're not able to sue. It's not just malpractice, you have the Federal Tort Claims Act that's available to you, but when pilots fly new planes, uh, we're not gonna create liability there. I think it's a trade-off that stood the test of time. Senator Graham is um, not accurately reflecting uh, what the bill says. Attorney Dan Rose is a Navy pilot veteran. He says Graham's answer shows a lack of understanding about the bill's narrow scope. For one, he says the Federal Tort Claims Act allows civilians the ability to sue the government, not active duty soldiers like Stayskull. And then there's this. When pilots fly new planes, uh, we're not going to create liability there. It's unclear why Graham brought up lawsuits involving defense contractors and planes because state school's bill only applies to medical malpractice not related to combat or training. Those government contractors, if they give the military the product that they want and they warn them about all the reasonable, foreseeable uh, dangers of the product, um, then they enjoy immunity. They cannot be sued. This bill is not changing any of it. We do know one of Graham's biggest campaign donors is Lockheed Martin. The company just sold the Pentagon nearly 500 F-35 fighter jets for $34 billion. And according to the Center for Responsive Politics, Graham has received more than $57,000 from affiliates and PACs of Lockheed Martin since his last election. Would you be willing to meet with Richard Stasekel? Uh. Uh, sure, I'd be glad to meet with him, but I'm not going to change my mind. After we asked if he would meet with Stayskull, Graham granted the dying North Carolina Special Forces soldier a 10-minute phone call to make his case. Stayskull's attorney credits Fox 46. We were very fortunate to speak to him, thanks to Matt Grant. That was the catalyst to uh, Senator Graham finally agreeing to meet with us. A bipartisan compromise, which passed the House Wednesday as part of the National Defense Authorization Act, would give the Department of Defense $400 million over the next decade to pay out malpractice claims internally. If signed into law, the measure would give troops, for the first time ever, the ability to be compensated for negligent medical care at our nation's military hospitals. Sometimes good things come out of terrible things, and uh, this is just one of them. It's a miracle. It is a Christmas miracle, a huge win. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how remarkable that is. Despite the win, Spear says she has serious concerns about allowing the DOD to investigate its own malpractice cases and paying out claims. We're going to have to watch the DOD. They're going to have to develop regulations. Well, you touched my heart you know, when I first met you, and you know, I knew this was something that was a fight worth fighting. A few floors down, we followed Stasekel, along with his wife and attorney, as they met with Congressman Richard Hudson. This is a sweet tasting victory. Thanking each other yeah. and Fox 46 yeah. for getting results. This guy was relentless. Nobody was as dog as Matt Grant, who was there every step of the way. Without the media driving this, we never would have succeeded. Or the drive of a soldier who never stopped fighting despite a dire diagnosis. This is landmark legislation. Typically in Washington, it takes a decade to get something like this done. Because Republicans and Democrats were so compelled by a rich story, and we're willing to come together and, and work on this, we've got a, a miracle story here. That's a sign of relief, isn't it? Demetrius Wingo and Lawan Monroe reached out to Fox 46 for help last month. Both towed from this Home Depot parking lot, forced to pay around 4000 bucks to get their trucks back, preventing Wingo from delivering water and Monroe from delivering groceries. That was a big loss for me. It shook us up pretty good. These guys are taking advantage of us, especially at a time when we're, you know, we're really trying to actually get out here and get supplies to people. Their stories um, and a series of Fox 46 it. investigations are getting results. Attorney General Josh Stein is suing A1 Towing Solutions, seeking refunds for customers, fines up to $9,000 per violation, and he wants to put them out of business. On Tuesday, a judge granted a temporary restraining order. I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Grant. I don't think that, um, we probably would be getting the help we're getting had it not been for you guys. The reason that I reached out to the attorney general was because I saw your initial article. The 24 page lawsuit accuses them of predatory towing, price gouging during a state of emergency and unfair and deceptive business practices. The company is accused of towing without permission, improperly charging 20% for not paying cash and charging double to tow a tractor and trailer, even though they're connected. It's outrageous, uh, unacceptable. 
against the law, and that's why we went to court. Stein's office received 14 predatory towing complaints in Charlotte. I want to thank you for your prior stories on this. The company says they'll fight the lawsuit, telling us by phone the price has been the same since day one, before the coronavirus. So how is this price gouging? We've got written consent to get these trucks off their property. We've got signs at every entrance that clearly states no tractor trailers. So where are we doing something wrong? Just, Fox 46, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks to you guys, man, and, and to the Attorney General, you know, for, uh, for hearing us out, man, and, and just trying to help us out.